Well, good afternoon, and good morning, and good evening, everybody joining around the world. My name is Dermot McCann. I'm actually joining you today from Sydney in Australia, and I'm uh, very delighted to be here. Normally, of course, I'd uh, like to be there in person. However, I'm not going to lie, the, the thought of a 20-hour flight for a 20-minute presentation, perhaps uh, there are some benefits of, of the current situation. But uh, I wanted to thank you all for joining us today, um, and also thank you to the RegTech Global team for setting up this event. It's been a great event so far. I'm going to take you through, um, I guess, you know, the topic is, you know, when subtech meets regtech, and we're going to spend the next 20 minutes or so just talking through some of the alignments and benefits that we have seen in the subtech space and how they're translating into the regtech environment. So we'll spend a bit of time talking about Visor and mostly spending some time on the subtech and the regtech space. Um, we'll have a discussion on how to streamline regulatory reporting. And also, I'll share a bit of insight into how the regulators across the world are supporting the adoption of RegTech. We will have some time for some Q&A at the end. Um, and I'll, of course, encourage you to participate with some Q&A there. But if you don't get to it, um, then please do join our booth. And we've been getting a lot of uh, passing traffic or virtual traffic at the booth which is not quite the same um, as when we would be there in person, but it's certainly uh, been a good substitute. So we'd hope to see you there if we, if we don't get to talk uh, during the session. I guess uh, first, uh, who's Visor? Um, well, we, um, we're actually celebrating our 20th birthday this year. We operate across 31 jurisdictions worldwide, um, which gives the regulators and also the regulated entities a really unique advantage when working with us. They get to leverage all of the insights and the expertise that we've accumulated because we've been deployed across 25 financial regulators across the globe, 16 or 19 global tax authorities, and over 30 banks worldwide. So our platform now supports over 100,000 users, um, really leading the way in subtech technology and increasingly in tax and now in regulatory reporting as well. The regulatory uh, landscape, as it as it, it is as, as it stands today, I suppose, and as we know in this world, there's nothing nothing more certain than death taxes, and the, according to Thomson Reuters, regulatory change. In fact, uh, in their 2019 report, their regulatory intelligence report, they captured over 55,000 regulatory alerts from more than 1,000 regulatory bodies, which is an average of 217 regulatory updates every day. Um, so regulatory changes can be anything from 100 to 200 per day. And, and this is only increasing during this time, as we've noticed, um, as, the, as the world has shifted, we've seen an increased requirements on reporting. Um, the additional comments here over the last two years, 90% of the data in the world was generated. Um, uh, over the last two years, 90% of the data in the world was generated over the last two years. So we're living in this digital era where data is on the increase every day, and, and it needs to travel, or it does, it loses its value. And humans can no longer be the courier of this data. Um, we're seeing increases in granular data requests from regulators, and I think a tipping point as well, where um, the data is no longer managed by individuals. We'll talk a little bit about that during the next couple of slides. Um, but in 2004, you know, banks are facing an average of 10 regulatory changes per, per day. We're seeing huge, huge increases um, and how to keep up. And the clients that we're talking to and the regulators we're speaking with are how do you actually physically keep up um, with these changes and, um, and what's next, I guess. So most of you will be familiar uh, with the current situation with regulatory reporting. The regulators released the PDFs and the FAQs, and each financial institution will then interpret and implement the, um, the requirements, MIFID II, for example, was a three-year process. And according to the EU, uh, to a, a study in the EU on the cost of compliance with the financial sector was very between 2 and 4% of the total cost. So on average, um, supervisory reporting was a significant component of the total compliance costs. Um, supervisory technology, um, making up you know, all of the, the, um, the data sourcing, the data transformation piece, so 20 to 40 percent of compliant costs across the se across the sector is both on and on uh, on, a, on an ongoing basis. Significant cost, significant complexity, um, not a lot of evolution any, in any of the major markets where we've looked um, from an entity perspective. But we're certainly starting to see a shift now. And I guess when we're looking at subtech and regtech alignment, 
the problem that Visor likes to solve for the regulators is to help them collect accurate, timely data uh, from the regulated entries. And, and we decided that it's time now to bridge the gap between subtech and regtech. Um, having such a, a long period working with regulators all over the world, um, we noticed that we were solving data collection challenges for regulators. But if you only do that, you're really only looking at one side of the coin. So as we've been helping regulators move from annual quarterly reporting to, to weekly daily collections and from template based forms to more granular data models, we've realized that looking at this process from the collection point is just has just been the tip of the iceberg. The efficiencies and the, the benefits that we're trying to bring to the regulators, we've really started now bring it to the financial institution. However, the challenge for the financial institution is that in this constant regulatory change, the updates are forcing them to allocate you know, so much of their resources to once-off and ongoing compliance. Um, in some recent surveys, uh, Duff and Phelps, uh, Phelps, for example, the banks are spending 4% on their total revenue on compliance. Um, and I mentioned I'm coming to you from Australia at the moment, and we, we've seen a you know, significant increase on that. We're in the numbers expected to grow to 10% uh, by 2022. So more than that, you know, you're seeing... Um, not just the, the cost of compliance, but also the cost, you know, the, the cost of fines. You know, there, we're, we're seeing an, an increase in fines through um, uh, missing deadlines and inappropriate reporting. In 2019 alone, you know, the, the PRA imposed a, a combined financial penalty of $44 million on Citigroup for failings in relation to their internal controls and government. In, in Ireland, the Central Bank of Ireland find Wells Fargo 5.8 million euros for serious failings in its regulatory reporting capability. And as I mentioned, here in Australia, Westpac were fined uh, $1.5 million for failing to meet its legal obligations to report data on time. These are simple and avoidable fines. Um, what I guess we have been doing is we've been working with the, sub, uh, with the regulators if we're using our subtech platform to help them get better, faster and smarter. And what we want to do now is bring the benefits of that platform um, to the entities, and that's where really where we see the the synergies between the subtech and and the um, and the regtech. So in subtech, it really is intended to allow regulatory authorities to have a more proactive monitoring, um, better reporting, compliance, and an overall supervision. Uh, so when we look at use cases reported to the data um, to date uh, to the BIS, we see it's broadly broken down into these two categories around data collection on the left hand side and data analytics on the right i do hope you can you can follow through on the chart but if you want to uh, ping me some questions i'm happy to take you through them in a bit more detail but many of the regulators that we talk to and are, are, who are our clients have recognized the need for more automated reporting and data collection and there needs to be consideration and planning for how this can interface seamlessly with the regulatory reporting solutions being provided by by a, a, a large number of reg tech vendors so once we get to understand, I guess, the use cases for subtech for the regulators, we will start to see the alignment with regtech and it becomes clear as to what the benefits are. And that's really what, you know, the, the purpose of this talk is how do you bridge that gap between subtech and the regtech to drive better alignment, to drive better benefits and drive, you know, increased efficiencies um, and and even the, even the playing field a little bit, as we'd say. So some of, some of those benefits, as I mentioned, you know, clear interpretation regulation, of regulation, um, easier to comply with the changes in regulations, uh, more efficient for the financial institutions to provide ad hoc data requests, and an increase in overall data quality. But you know, RegTech's not just about technology. It's about the knowledge of the regulator, and it's, of course, about the processes as well. So um, we'll spend a bit of time just talking on, you know, some of those technologies, some, some of the improvements, some of the evolution of the technology, where it has come from very briefly and where it's going to as well and, and how subtech and reg tech really, you know, are the, the yin and yang, if I'll use that term, on, on, on regulatory compliance. Um, we talked through, you know, first generation, second generation, third and fourth generation technologies here. And this really does come down to um, gaining um, synergies between static reports through the business intelligence and you know, using descriptive analytics to going into cognitive and, and descriptive diagnostics and predictive uh, predictive uh, analytics. We're seeing a lot of um, 
spreadsheets, you know, the storage, just the, just the, the volume of data we still see. And in, in some of our recent research, we still see over 80% of the entities that we've been working with and speaking with are still using, you know, a lot of manual processes and manual spreadsheets versus the evolution now into, you know, data lakes and cloud computing and, you know, a number of organizations really starting to embrace cloud and, and, and the notion of a data lake. Um, versus uh, the data swamp that so many organizations probably find themselves in at the moment. And then just general processing speeds and efficiencies that can be gained here for manual spot checks, uh, which is really error prone spot checks and, and are kind of um, automated to a certain extent, but are really um, cumbersome to, to achieve in through to where we are focusing now and straight through processing using, um, using RPA and, and AI based technologies. So, again, the, probably the, the, the piece where Visor is looking at the moment and where we'll start speaking on is, you know, how you shift from that manual submission and um, through to an automated reporting, get real-time monitoring in place. Um, and we'll spend a bit of time just looking at, at some of the real-time monitoring solutions we have. So, I guess here's a reg, uh, reg reporting overview. And as we've seen from the, um, the previous chart, you'll see that... Um, we are keeping machine readable reporting requirements in sync with the rules with the regulators we have a regulator here on the right hand side and we have built the, the rules engines we built the reporting requirements and we're building the validations that they're using and on the left hand side we have made the same template and same platform available to the regulators um, and this is what enables i guess you know visor and reg reporting solutions just well uh, to to guarantee your submission what we what we do is we take the metadata from the financial institution we, we 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 source it we go through the ingestion we do all the mapping of the codes and the, of the, the the rules from the regulator and then we prepare the the reports inclusive of all the data lineages and we we augment that metadata with some additional intelligence that you would imagine we've gathered over 20 years and working with you know um 25 regulators around the world so that provides the financial institution with a lot more certainty and um, clarity on their reporting, simplifies it. We then generate the XSDs and provide a full audit trail as, as the requirements change. In addition, by using a regulatory reporting platform like Visor, you're getting the plausibility checks and the additional insight that we would have and that we're embedding inherently into the model. So these data models are, and, and reports are then available and they can be ingested in through a through the data into a, a data hub or a data, data warehouse where everything can be tagged. And once your reports are then populated, we can pre-validate them. And, and this has been the big change from a supervisory to a reg tech um, platform in that traditionally you wait for the regulator to come back to you and advise you how you how you perform. Whereas with our technology at the moment, we're looking, we're looking at pre-validation sets for our clients. Um, making sure that all the reports are compliant, um, are validated, are checked um, for all of the um, nuances that each of the regulators around the world are looking for, um, so that they're you know guaranteed to be right first time and every time. Um, having this use of the cloud technology in this way, using uh, APIs, replication program interfaces, you're really staying in sync with the regulator. And that's where we see that that, that that gap bridging even more between regulators and entities. So we can guarantee the submission and we can also guarantee the validity of the submission, um, which becomes a very powerful and efficient tool for, for, for both parties, both the entities and the regulators. Um, I guess globally, we're seeing increased adoption of this type of a model. I mentioned we have 25 regulators um, and you know, over 30 major financial institutions are using this this um, platform as well. And I guess as we look at you know the top 10 markets where, where this is prevalent, the UK obviously out in front, um, followed closely by um, a good adoption across the US and Luxembourg. Um, Australia is really um, coming along and we're gonna, I'm gonna spend a few minutes now just talking through some of the more mature markets, particularly Australia, Singapore, UK. Um, Canada is also another strong market in this, um, but where where we are seeing some, I guess, some specific use cases for this technology, or where, where where we've seen the benefit, um, I'll talk specifically to Monetary Authority of Singapore. Now, the granting the supports there have been um, 
they've they've dedicated their fintech office in, in the Maz uh, to to provide grants to financial institutions and solution providers. Um, in the UK, we've you know everyone's seen the great support um, from the FCA and the Bank of England, showing their leadership through digital reporting, or digital re regulatory reporting initiatives, um, and adoption of the data standards such as LEI and and uh, the Bank of England um, are currently consulting with the industry on on the future of data collection. And there's been some great talks already during this conference on the future of data collection. Um, meanwhile, here in Australia, I mentioned APRA, they're, they're in the middle of a large data transformation program, uh, which we are working very closely with them on. And um, it's uh, the, the mig migration away from uh, D2A to their APRA Connect. Uh, and it will really modernize how APRA collects, stores, and provides access to that data. We are you know, obviously very privileged and in a very fortunate and a unique position uh, to work with all three of these regulators. So we see the signals from the regulars who want to adapt their ways of working to include this type of technology. And we're seeing how their proactive approach is, is really changing the dynamics of data collection and, of course, regulatory reporting overall. Um, some additional benefits we, we noticed when we, when we launched this platform, we took the, the benefits that we were providing to the regulator and we provided it then to the entity. And we saw that um, the regulators really accept that as an industry, we can raise the compliance bar if we are going to market. So we were initially pr predominantly just focused on the supervisory technology. And then with the success in the, with the regulators, it was really a good opportunity for Visor to take the benefits of that technology into entities. And, and those benefits being, of course, you know, real-time updates, you know, staying in sync with the latest data, data models, the logic and the rules published by the regulator, and using the same rules engine. And, the, the, the notion of trust, I mentioned, you know, pre-validating submissions. Uh, it's really important to be able to pre-validate your submissions. It reduces significant amount of rework and also the frustration in cross-checking um, and, and when, you know, a regulator responds with queries or returns your submissions, the costs associated with that. Um, by working with the regulators and with Visor, you know, you can, you can um, ensure that you're getting not a, only just right the first time, but you're getting a full audit trail of, of what has happened on the platform and when. And that becomes very compelling for a lot of entities. Naturally, the elimination of duplication of effort is significant um, as we reduce costs and resources. And really the focus is on you know, machine, machine to machine if necessary or machine learning and using the, the, the tools that we have available in our, in our cloud platform to, to drive those efficiencies and just make the whole thing a lot easier for everyone. Well, um, and we can do that, I mentioned, through APIs or, or through the portal it, it, itself. So, look, I guess in conclusion, I hope this has been an informative talk. Um, I'm glad I didn't fly there for, for, 20, for a 20-minute presentation. But if anybody would like uh, to have a further conversation, we, we've got some time. We've got probably a minute or so for questions. Um, but I would encourage you, please do stop by our booth. Um, we see a huge opportunity for closer alignment between subtech and regtech. And we know we can cut down the cost of regulatory reporting dramatically and improve the efficiency. But more importantly, I think, as I said, we want to be able to support raising the bar um, of compliance uh, you know, across each of the 19 or 31 jurisdictions that Advisor is currently operating. I think it's a great opportunity for the industry to, to get behind this um, and also to do it in a very cost-efficient way. You know, I think an organization like Advisor has, has, has been around 20 years, has made the investment. Um, it's time to get off the spreadsheets and uh, and uh, get with the get with the uh, the um, the benefits that the regulators are using. So, in conclusion, um, thank you very much again for your time. Um, my name is Dermot McCann. Please do visit us at our workshop, or you're more than welcome to email me at dermot.mccann at visorsoftware.com. Um, I will be over in the workshop, and I'll just hand over to Emily if there are any questions. Otherwise, I will see you at the workshop. Thank you.